Hello there, I'm Dave Allen on Good and Geeky, and today we're going to talk about Tana. Tana versus Logseek and Obsidian. I put in my application to get the access to the beta version of Tana. I waited for a quite a long time and forgot all about it. Then the invitation arrived and I couldn't wait to give it a try. And here are my first impressions of Tana. You have to log in to the software using a Google email address. And I have to wonder if there's too much of a Google connection there. There isn't an application specifically for Tana and you need to run it in a Google based browser to start with. I used the Brave browser and so it was no problem to get started using Tana. It soon gave me a prompt to add the Brave browser application which allows Tana to open like a proper application. Even before you have done that with a browser application you can use an application within a browser tab. I prefer proper applications. I'm not even that keen on Electron applications like Obsidian and Logseek. This is because I do a lot of dictation and voice control dictation doesn't work too well if it's not a proper Mac application. There's good help to get you started with Tana. I was quite impressed with the onboarding efforts by the software developers. They do the best to make it easy to get you started. There are helpful little prompts to help you understand how Tana works. They explain how the basic starting point for the application is in the calendar. It's kind of the same way for Obsidian and Logseek. You throw your data into these places and work outwards from there. It's like if you go into using tags in a big way on your Mac and throw all your files into one big bucket and you rely on those tags to be able to find, classify and use all of your data. Do I really need another personal knowledge management application? I wonder. On account of the fact I already have Obsidian and I like it, I have to wonder if I'm in need of another personal knowledge management application. I really got into Logseek and I enjoyed that application hugely. It's a great piece of software and I'd have been happy to stick with it, except I gave Obsidian another try and found I liked it also. Obsidian had the added advantage of being the one, at the time, which offered synchronisation. It's only good and geeky curiosity making me have a look at Tana. I have seen quite a few people raving about how good it is. Another of my first impressions about Tana is that it's still very much a work in progress. I don't mind that. Mind you, that can be said of just about every software application on whatever platform out there. The other application in this personal knowledge management arena I like is Craft. On the con side of Craft is the fact that it doesn't have tags. A big plus for Craft is that it's a proper Mac application with corresponding iOS applications too. This can't be said of Tana. And to use it on a mobile device, it's not ideal at all. In fact, I don't like it. You have to use it for within a browser. And on a small iPhone, it's not good. I don't like it. Craft does give you synchronization. It has just introduced a connection to AI artificial intelligence. There are other ways to get directly into GPT-3, but it's cool to have it built into the application. And it was for that reason I updated Craft or continued with the subscription for the application. It's also cheaper than the subscription to the synchronization you get in Obsidian. By the way, it also looks like Logseek might have synchronization as a paid for option. Obsidian is further along the road than Tana as regards development. It has a vibrant and passionate community around it, but so does Tana. Many of these people on Obsidian are adding to the functionality of Obsidian with excellent plugins. The same can also be said of Logseek, and like I said, both of these applications are really useful. I find the query language used in Obsidian a little bit easier to use and understand than the one in Logseek. I haven't seen what it does in Tana yet, but still. Tana still has got a long way to go in its development journey. It could be a really useful application. After using these other applications for personal knowledge management and getting used to the way they work, it's difficult to get my head around Tana. Many of the concepts are quite similar to the others with the linking from one document or node to other documents or nodes. Wiki style linking isn't really anything new, but you do have to get used to the different language being used to describe how it works and fits together in each of these apps. You don't just get tags in Tana, you get super tags. I quite like the way that you get different ways to view your data. The standard way to view the data is with a list, but you can set it up to view as a table or as cards. Bringing data into Tana, how do we do it? At the moment, the two formats you can use to bring in data 
from other applications is from Roam and with Workflowy. You can bring information in from other applications, but you have to use a specialised format called TANA Intermediate Format. I'd be tempted to bring in some or all of my data from Obsidian just to see how it looks in TANA. I expect someone has made a plugin or something which will allow me to do that. One of the nice things about Obsidian and LogSeq is the fact that it uses Markdown format. What you can do with that is import documents, put them in the correct folders, and they're automatically part of the Obsidian Vault or the LogSeq graph. Markdown is easy to use and you can set up titles and headers and all sorts of things with a minimum of effort. In Tanner, it seems you've got only a minimal formatting options. I expect that is going to change because you have to have formatting. Visual learners need it. It's something that's got to be there. The Tanner workspace. Let's have a look at that. It's a basic three panel setup. On the left, you have your workspaces and various lists. And within the workspaces, there are other lists containing more information. The centre panel is the document panel. This is where you put your data. As I mentioned, the calendar is your starting point for adding data. This gets a super tag of day. A super tag is like a template, I think. You add lists and whatever you want to it appear each time you use the super tag. A book super tag can be configured with a title, author, status, number of pages, date finished, for example. Could work out quite good. In the calendar, there are options at the top to go to the previous, next day, and to specific date. Clicking on these will take you to the specific date, or there could be a button there for today. Cool. Okay, so I kind of like the look of Tanner, but there's something about it. It's not quite there yet, you know, and nothing that's going to make me sort of really sort of say, okay, well, I'm going to leave behind Obsidian or LogSeq or Craft. Although I tend to be using uh, Obsidian most of these days with a little bit of graft here and there. And I'm just going to leave Tanner there and explore it and see what it can do and try and understand it so I can make a couple of videos about it and pass on the information. Anyway, this is Dave Allen. If you've got something from this video, stick a like in there. And also what you can do is subscribe because there are going to be more tutorials coming along and you don't want to miss them. Okay, bye-bye now. Talk to you again soon.